Hans Ulrich Rudel was Germany's most decorated World War II ace. In fact, he was the sole recipient of Germany's highest gallantry award, the Knight's Cross with golden oak leaves, swords and diamonds, equating to an astounding five Knight's Crosses. And he achieved all this in the unlikeliest of aircraft, the Junkers Ju-87 Stuka. The Stuka dive bomber became infamous during the German attack on France and the Low Countries in 1940, making precision attacks on ground targets and harrying refugee columns, providing the airborne artillery necessary for the success of the new German method of fighting called Blitzkrieg, or Lightning War. During the Battle of Britain, Stukas bombed Britain's radar stations, but also fell easy victim to Royal Air Force Spitfires and Hurricanes. Vulnerable to modern fighters, the Stukas received a new lease of life on the Eastern Front, becoming a formidable tank buster and anti-ship aircraft. Rudel chalked up 51 aerial victories in various types of aircraft, making him an ace many times over. But it was his ground kills in the Stuka that were incredible. 519 tanks claimed destroyed, 150 artillery guns, and even a battleship and a cruiser sunk, along with 70 landing craft and 800 vehicles of all types. Rudel was also political, a devout national socialist to the end of his days and a favourite of Hitler's. In February 1945, Colonel Rudel was badly wounded in the right foot and his leg was later amputated below the knee. But though his wound had not properly healed, he returned to flying on the 25th of March 1945. He even met his hero Hitler one last time on the 19th of April in shattered Berlin. Rudel fought on until VE Day, knocking out a further 26 Soviet tanks. But early on the 8th of May, Rudel learned that the German armed forces had surrendered. He had no intention of surrendering himself to the Soviets, and instead decided to fly to the Americans and surrender, along with his remaining pilots. Hasty preparations were made to evacuate the Luftwaffe base at Koma am See near Prague in Czechoslovakia. Enough fuel remained to reach a U.S. airbase at Kitzingen, home to the 405th Fighter Group of the U.S. 9th Air Force. Three Junkers 87 Stukas were available, Rudel flying his famous Ju-87 G2 Cannonbird that was equipped with a 37mm cannon under each wing, along with four Focke-Wulf 190 fighter bombers. Rudel had another good reason to go to the Americans. His right stump was still swollen and bleeding. He believed the Americans would treat his wound. He gathered together the air crew and ground crew and gave them a short speech, thanking them for their loyalty and courage. He bade farewell to the ground personnel, who would head west in trucks, and then the flight of Stukas and 190s prepared to leave. Rudel radioed the American 19th Tactical Air Command, telling them that he would be coming in. The US command gave the order for anti-aircraft units not to engage approaching Luftwaffe aircraft. But, importantly, this information failed to be received by the US base at Kitzingen. The 2,500 men of the 405th Fighter Wing were lined up in parade formation on the field, awaiting a flyover by their aircraft to mark VE Day. They were about to receive a completely different kind of flyover that no one had anticipated. 
The 405th's 75 P-47 Thunderbolts, all unarmed, were not on the field. They were 15 miles away, forming up for the flypast, when Rudolf's flight suddenly appeared overhead. The unmistakable shape of the Stukas and 190s caused enormous disquiet among the US personnel, who began to break ranks until ordered to stand still, many fearing that the Germans were about to launch some kind of last-ditch attack on the airfield. Rudel was determined to preserve the honour of his unit, and had ordered his pilots to deliberately crash land their Stukas and 190s on the US airfield so that the planes could not be taken as prizes by the enemy. The first aircraft, the Stuka flown by Rudel, deliberately ran off the end of the runway, tipping over in the soft soil. Two Stukas and two 190s successfully ground looped or collapsed their landing gear. The 190s, single seat fighters, each carried a passenger stuffed into a small equipment space. One 190 landed perfectly and was not wrecked, and when the passenger climbed out, it was a woman. The Stukas were also overloaded, each carrying three people. In total, six of the seven German planes deliberately crashed, and 21 people emerged to surrender. Rudolf Stuka came to rest, and he was soon confronted by an American pointing a Colt 45 pistol at him. He opened the canopy, but the American tried to snatch Rudolf's knight's cross from around his throat. Rudolf pushed him away and closed the canopy, only opening it again when a senior U.S. officer arrived. Speaking English, Rudel identified himself. Turning to the two and a half thousand Americans still standing on parade, Rudel thanked the U.S. officer for ordering the review, not realizing that it was not in his honor. Limping along on crutches, Rudel walked down the front rank of Americans on his way to the base aid station, putting on quite a show. The intact Focke-Wulf 190, which had landed with the woman passenger, was actually Rudel's personal plane that he had flown fighter sorties in during the latter part of the war. He gave U.S. pilots a tour of the aircraft, which was later test-flown by American top guns on the base. Luckily for Rudel and his men, the Americans refused to hand them over to the Soviets. Rudel entered U.S. captivity as a high-profile prisoner of war and was released in April 1946. In 1948, he went to Argentina via one of the infamous rat lines for Nazi war criminals using a fake Red Cross passport in the name of Emilio Maia. Although not a war criminal, Rudel nonetheless remained a devout Nazi and actively helped actual war criminals to evade justice in Argentina and Paraguay, amongst many other places. He became friendly with former SS Hauptsturmführer Dr. Josef Mengele, helping to move Dr. Mengele to Brazil, and was a close friend of Argentine President Juan Perón and Paraguayan dictator General Alfredo Stroessner. He was also a military advisor and arms dealer for Bolivia, the Pinochet regime in Chile, and General Stroessner, and acted as a foreign representative for many West German companies, including Siemens, Messerschmitt, Focke-Wulf, and Dornier. He even consulted on the development of the American A-10 Thunderbolt tank-busting aircraft. Through Rudel, the CIA had contact with many former SS and Wehrmacht officers living in South America, both for espionage purposes and technical matters. And Rudel was also in contact with former SS commando extraordinaire Otto Skotseni. Rudel returned to West Germany in 1953, being a leading neo-Nazi, even standing for election, and would also travel to South America often. In 1977, he became spokesman for the German People's Union Nationalist Party and was involved in several major public scandals. Married three times, Rudel died of a stroke on the 18th of December 1982. Controversially, during his funeral in Dornhausen, two West German Luftwaffe F-4 Phantoms made a low-altitude pass over his grave. The German government quickly denied that the flight was anything other than a training mission. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share. And also visit my new audiobook channel, War Stories with Mark Felton.
You can also help support both of my channels at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below.